What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So today we are talking about the new fall 2022 polishes from Zoya. So we actually have two collections today. We've got the Cafe Creams and the Metallic Dreams. And even though these are technically two separate collections, they really feel like one cohesive set. If you haven't heard of Zoya before, they are a mainstream salon brand that is 10 free, meaning they're free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do do not use any animal derived ingredients and they're also cruelty free meaning they do not test their products on animals. So like I said technically we have two collections today we've got the cafe creams which is six new polishes five of which are creams and one is a specialty finish and then we have the metallic dreams which is a trio of metallic foil polishes and all of them are very fall inspired neutral shades. So let me show you the swatches first then we'll talk a little bit more about pricing availability my thoughts on these collections and my thoughts on Zoya in general. So roll the footage. As with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base. So I'm going to start with the Metallic Dreams collection first, which is the trio of metallic foil polishes. This first one is called Matilda and it's a really beautiful dusty pink base that has a really intense duochrome almost champagne shimmer in it. So it's basically a foil finish. You can see on the second coat, it has full coverage because it's such a light shade. It almost looks like it's sheer, but that's just the reflectiveness of it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this style. I love a colorful metallic and I think it just looks so beautiful for any time of year. Then we have the shade Moki and this one I would describe as being a deep gold, almost leaning a little bit into the brown territory, but it feels distinctly gold because that shimmer within it is just super vibrant and that yellow gold color and there's also these really beautiful larger flecks so you get a really nice sparkle as you move your nail around and it catches the light. It was actually really really opaque in the first coat but I did need a second to get full coverage and again it looked absolutely gorgeous on. There's a tiny hint of a brush stroke but I think that that makes a little bit more of an elegant vibe on the nails. You can always spot it on if you don't like the streakiness. And then the final shade of the first collection is Amara and this one is a deep brown metallic foil. So we've got this really intense dark rich brown base and then we have this golden brown shimmer running throughout. Again we have those slightly larger flecks as well that just add a really nice sparkle and again this one was pretty much opaque in the first coat but I did need a second for full coverage and again it does have that very slight streakiness which honestly I think elongates the nail a little bit so I really love the vibe but I love this lit from within kind of gold. I think it's just so intense and gorgeous. Now I'm just going to jump into the cafe creams. I think all of these polishes are similar enough that I can just do a comparison of all of them together so I'll do that at the end but the cafe creams this first shade is called biscuit and it is a medium light very warm leaning beige cream. I think it actually ends up looking a little bit more yellow in the bottle than it looked on me for some reason it was leaning a little bit cooler toned on me which I think is interesting because I am very warm toned but yeah it's a nice light color it gave me perfect coverage in two coats really easy beginner friendly formula. Next we have this sort of blush nude shade this one's called Kahula I think. The hard thing about Zoya I always try to look up words for pronunciation before I post them in swatch reviews but with Zoya it's always names and there's never a reliable source of pronouncing names names on the internet so I'm not 100% on this one but it's a really beautiful color. It's sort of this deep warm rosy blush kind of nude shade. It has a really nice undertone to it. It's got that soft pinkiness to it and it still has enough of a neutral tone that I feel like this is a great work appropriate color. Honestly this whole collection is. Moving on we have the shade Remington and this one is more of a maroon brown which I feel like is very difficult to describe exactly how it looks but again you get that sort of pinky tone to it but it still has a little bit of a brownish tone as well and I think it ends up looking a little bit warmer on me than it is in the bottle. I would say it's a little bit more pinky and a little bit more dusty in the bottle but these types of nude neutral shades always kind of shift depending on your skin tone so it's always nice to see it over a variety of skin tones before you make your purchasing decision. I think this 
one looked pretty dark on me. Next up, we have the shade Constance, and this one is a very deep, cool toned, dusty purple cream. So again, I think this one leaned slightly warmer on me. I think it looked a little bit cooler toned in the bottle, but it's this nice sort of dusty eggplant color. And this is the type of purple that I always describe as being a neutral shade, even though it is very clearly not a nude. I feel like this is sort of within the same realm where it's soft and desaturated enough that it feels like a good neutral shade that you can wear with anything or any time of year. So this this one, again, perfect coverage in two coats. Next up, we have the shade Ophelia, and this one is the final cream finish in this collection, and this one is a deep, slightly cool-toned brown. You can see it was actually really sheer in the first coat, so it looks a lot warmer because you can see a lot of my skin underneath it, but it does cool down once you get it to full opacity, and again, it has this nice dustiness to it and this nice cool undertone. Now, I will say, I did not really until I was editing this video that this is so patchy in two coats. You can still see so much of my nail through it. This one needed a third coat and so for that reason I don't think this shade is worth it at all. It is dark enough that it should be a two coater. And the final shade of the Cafe Creams is this one Bonnie and I'm not actually sure if this is classified as a topper or a standalone polish but I am going to show you the polish on its own as well as as a topper. So this one's almost like a jelly formula where it has this very, very soft blush pink jelly base that's pretty sheer. You can see in the first coat, it just adds a little bit of a brightening touch to my nails. And then we also have a duochrome gold to pink shimmer as well as larger pink metallic glitters. So there's definitely a lot going on in here. I thought it looked pretty in one coat and I also think it looks really nice in two coats. I know the visible nail line look is not for everybody. So of course you might wanna build this one up to full coverage. I thought it had really nice coverage in three coats. It still showed the visible nail line, but it sort of softened and blurred it out enough that you could really see mostly that pink color as well as those really intense shimmers. So I thought it was really fun to wear in three coats. I also wanted to show you what it looked like as a topper. So here is what it looks like over Remington. And you can see because I'm using it over a deeper base, we kind of lose all of that dusty pink jelly color. And you really just get a golden shimmery topper. But just keep in mind, if you do use this over a lighter shade, you're probably gonna get a little bit of discoloration of that base if you're not doing it over a pink. So here are all of the shades together. The top row is the Metallic Dreams and the bottom two rows are the Cafe Creams. And overall, I really enjoyed this collection. Aside from that one brown shade, which definitely needed three coats, which I find to be a little disappointing because I feel like deeper shades like that definitely shouldn't require so many coats. I think over Overall, the formulas were really good. I love this color story. It feels very distinctly fall, and it's also got this nice neutral vibe to it. So they all feel very work appropriate, very event appropriate. If you're a person who likes to stick to neutrals and you don't like to venture too far out, I think this is a perfect collection for you. And also, if you're a colorful metallic person like me, those metallic dreams really are very dreamy. I think they're very fun. So those are the two collections, and overall, I really enjoyed the polishes. I feel like these collections collections kind of reminded me of their Naturel line, which is their seasonal neutral polishes that they do. And those tend to be more like the brown and beige nudes, but sometimes they dip into other undertones. And that's kind of the feeling that I was getting from these polishes. So I love the color story and I also really appreciated the dustiness of them. So it felt like we were getting the classic fall colors, but it wasn't the sort of rich browns that we're used to seeing. It was just something a little bit different, which I appreciated. Now, as far as the Metallic Dreams trio, I absolutely loved them, especially those two metallic browns. They were so opaque and I feel like I'm going to be using them a lot for nail art and also just to wear on their own because they're gorgeous, but I absolutely love colorful metallics. So that was definitely the standout for me in this review. To be honest, I feel like Zoya has been letting me down a little bit recently. I've just found that their color palettes were a little uninspired and I felt like their formulas were lacking, but 
these two collections really brought me back to what I love about Zoya, having this really gorgeous neutral color palette and also just having those really opaque impressive formulas that I know and love from them. So even though we aren't getting anything crazy, unique, or different, I really hope that we continue to see Zoya going in this direction and I have pretty high hopes for what they do for the winter. One thing to keep in mind about Zoya is that their default brush is actually a round skinny brush and separately they do have what's called the Z wide brush and that's the brush that I use in my swatches. It's just a wide flat brush that has a rounded tip. So if you aren't grabbing that separately, you are going to get the round skinny brush. Now I usually get my Zoyas from HB Beauty Bar, which is an online nail polish retailer and they're the 15 milliliter bottles retail for $9.50 USD each. And I also have a discount code. You can use the code Kelly for 22% off your whole order there. And that includes other brands as well. So that's usually where I get my Orly Bonder base coat. And they do sell the Zoya Remove Plus, which is my favorite nail polish remover. So I'm going to link all of that down below. You can check them out if you're interested. But yeah, that is it for my thoughts. Overall, pretty impressed with these and hoping to see Zoya move in an upward trend. But I'm curious to hear what you think. What do you think of this collection? Are you into Zoya? Are you tired of them? Leave all your thoughts in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a second YouTube channel, my vlog channel, if you want to get in on my weekly everyday life. And of course, a huge shout out to my cosmic admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocket Man's daughter, Paula, and Kenneth. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Bake Up Little Susie. And Bake Up Little Susie wants to know, what is something you regularly do that people might consider old fashioned? I think the biggest thing that I do is that I like to keep notes or lists or anything handwritten. I am very reliant on my phone, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's less common now to see handwritten stuff, especially for people in my age range. Most people just keep everything electronic, but I still like to have things written down. I feel like especially with to-do lists, it gives me a huge sense of satisfaction to like check it off or cross it off. I don't know. I don't know if this is necessarily uncommon, but I feel like it is old fashioned because the joke is always like, don't call, just text. But I really do enjoy talking on the phone. So I talk on the phone a lot. Like I, I just hate typing out a long story via text. And actually, speaking of handwriting things, I also handwrite my journal. I feel like it's a lot more common these days to just have an electronic resource for that. And I originally had an app on my phone that was like a journaling app where I could just journal my thoughts and feelings electronically wherever I was. But I just feel like I don't get the sense of satisfaction as I do when I'm writing it with my hand. So yeah, I guess most of my old fashioned stuff would be just writing things down. I think that might be it. I'm actually very big on technology. Aside from writing lists and keeping my planner and my journal on paper, I also have a very good sense of direction, which I feel like is not common anymore because people are so reliant on like GPS. I think I'm pretty good at like being able to tell stuff, but I don't know if that counts as old fashioned. I think that's just being a millennial. We kind of learned how to drive before GPS systems were a big thing. All right, that's it. If anybody has anything that they would like to answer in the fun fact question, you can always leave it in the comments and we can chat about it. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.